Yeah, we got movie clips in the background and everything. We're trying to be more professional, Pika. Up to it. <laughs> hey there, Reverend Sully, Eric O'Sullivan, ordained on the internet. The caveat, as always, please do not burn your hands holding on to my hot takes. If you do, well, that's on you, pal. I just wanted to tune in for my movie of the week. I literally watched it last week, and I believe it's a Christmas movie, and it's set at Christmas. Even in this scene right here, we're at a Christmas tree lot. So the movie is set during Christmas. This is uh, Lethal Weapon 1 from 1987, directed and um, co-produced by Richard Donner. Um, the Superman movies, you know. Um, this is a Joel Silver movie. Uh, he was a big name, a, a Hollywood producer. And it was written by Shane Black, who is also a writer-director. <clears throat> And, he, and uh, Shane Black, I'm not too hot for his movies. He did The Predator, and that had a, you know, a child, and it was set around a holiday. It was set at Halloween, but then he's also got the other these other movies that it's always some precocious kid set around Christmas time. And uh, I think it all starts here in 1987, and um, he wrote Lethal Weapon 1. And this is one of these... Uh, what we refer to as cocaine-fueled machismo action movies. Um, yeah, they had their place in time. And um, I don't know what kind of power fantasies you're, this is trying to live out, but, but it, it was a great use of <clears throat> the buddy dynamic, the buddy system, and about how we save each other's lives. And we keep making great relationships um, even as we get older. I mean, Riggs is celebrating his 50th birthday. And uh, he gets a new partner in the form of, Mar uh, uh, I mean, Murtaugh. Roger Murtaugh is just turned 50. He's a family man. Um, he's got kids and a wife. And um, he'll be retiring soon enough in these movies. But uh, he's getting given a new partner in the hot shot of uh, Mel Gibson's Martin Riggs, who's a little, you know, he's got issues. He's dealing with depression. He's, um, he struggles and he copes, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah, there are, are fair or unfair, you know, depictions of mental health in this, in this 80s movie. I got all four of them on Blu-ray for 25 bucks around Christmas time. This was a Christmas present to myself. I enjoy all these movies. Uh, two has one of the funniest scenes in any movie ever for me. It's when uh, Joe Pesci and Danny Glover are distracting the, 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 the security at the South African consulate so Riggs can sneak in and do some, you know, uh, detective work. <laughs> Um, and it's one of the funniest scenes on camera. Uh, it gave them enough general chemistry and on, on screen chemistry. And um, they got um, a non-sequel out of this called Gone Fishing. It was made in 94, I believe. And it's one of the few movies I wish I walked out of. It was so unfunny. And what's worse is that my stepdad loves that movie. And he wants to show that during the holidays. And I'm always like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I've seen that one. Oh, it's okay. I, I can, I'm all set there. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny, huh? But it's um, Lethal, Weapon f Lethal Weapon 1. And it was released on March 6th, 1987. I'll tell you that I was 14 years old. And I'm an eighth grade i'm finishing up middle school chances are that i seen this rated r movie with my dad he would take me to any movie i wanted to see which was really cool uh i got free range on rated r movies yeah he just wouldn't buy me any dirty funny books to take home i remember once we we're at the comic book store and it's his usual saturday and i wanted to buy this uh this issue of shauna queen of the jungle uh, but I'm like, I'm probably like 11 or 12 and the guy wouldn't sell it to me because she's topless in a scene. And, um, 
And my dad had to use a pay phone to call my mom to ask her permission. And she said no. So he had to come all the way back to, um, and I was like, you know, just, so I was in like the only child limbo of indecision hell for about 20 minutes. It took him to walk and come back and just like, you know, bother my mom. And like, you know, the kid wants to buy a, a funny book with you. And it's got a picture of a booby in it. Oh no, he can't see that. You know, <laughs> but by 1987, by 14 years old, I had seen a lot of rated R movies uh, upon their release. And Pink Floyd, The Wall, wow. The Terminator, 1984, Jim Cameron. Um, Aliens, Jim Cameron, before this, too. That's a, um, I saw a Red Dawn. That was the first PG-13 movie. Um, I saw a lot of like Predator, uh, um, Commando. I saw all these movies when they came out at the movie theater. Um, it was a great time to be a, a kid and allowed that, you know, rated R thing, you know. Um, but Lethal Weapon, yeah, it was uh, yeah, music by Eric Clapton. This really moody music. This sort of really defines an 80s movie. Uh, in all of its problematic glory as well. It starts off with, um, like, you know, what they would call woman in a refrigerator, uh, eventually in comics. Literally, I mean this. Uh, it starts off with Amanda Hunsaker, topless and tawdry, and she jumps off of, uh, of, her, con uh, of her high rise condo. And um, so it's like all this problematic male gaze misogynist stuff that's like, this is. These are the moments in cinema history that kind of prove the critical theories. Um, because zero fucks were given is probably it. And, you know, so movie, they don't make movies like that anymore. Um, but this definitely was one of those 80s movies that just... that it, This Hollywood hegemony of, like, you know, this... The, the, you know, that quite could be objectification and weirdness it was just showed like topless dead girl like oh my god doomed topless dead girl and just it was just um but it was in the day where tna meant something what does tna mean now to you i mean put it in the comment section below please if i said tna to you on a tweet like you know t n a uh, no, you don't even need apostrophes. Or maybe you do, but uh, what would that say now? Like, what would what what do you presume out of that acronym? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if I say. But TNA in the seven in the seventies and eighties meant uh, tits and ass, and that's like what you would get in a rated R movie theater. You would find you know mature situations. You would have nudity. Uh, God bless you if you ever try to watch any of the late 70s Chuck Norris body without being offended. I mean, good God bless you if you can. I mean, <laughs> that's impossible. It is just, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, so, it's Lethal Weapon 1. Um, and, and in quite Mel Gibson fashion, he's quite handles, you know, being tortured. There's a if you look through Mel Gibson's body of his work, he gets tortured in a lot of his movies because he could pull it off well. He's just, uh, I think it was that, that whole Christian thing, you know, and him doing Passion of the Christ. I mean, <laughs> this movie. Oh, man. It's it's simultaneously horrible. It was never good, It was, but it was just meant to be entertaining and fun. I don't think it was meant to be like, great or good or even, it was just... It had pacing, it had structure, it had events, it had, you know, it, it balanced between the internal and external. It had, like, good principal photography. It had two really good leads. And it parlayed into a bunch of unintentional sequels. That there was one of these things you can tell. They're just like, it, these stories are just meant to be told, and then Planet of the Apes happen, or Jaws happen, or Star Wars happen. And you, we get sequels. And um, so, yeah, this was in 1987. Um, then came part two, um, then part three, and part four. 
And two, three, and four have Joe Pesci. And he was a wonderful addition to this. And in part three, we're given Rene Russo. And then by part four, we're given Chris Rock. And um, so every movie adds another star to its sky. And it's just mindless. Oh, and in part four has Jet Li. And he's the bad guy. Jet Li's playing a bad guy. Wow. Okay. And so there are a lot of good fight effects. There are a lot of... Uh, and, you know, I'm over guns. I just, the whole, these are the 80s guns movies that, like, you know, just contributed to, like, it's just a desensitizing violence, maybe. You know, I mean, guns have been cool since Westerns. I mean, so there's, there could be a lot about the kind of culture we live in, you know, think, using violence as dispute resolution. You know, it's in our comic books. It's in our action movies. Well, because peaceful solutions are quite often boring, huh? But, um, but yeah, these are just some kind of power fantasies. And um, these were the storytelling values of its day. And, yeah, these were definitely the cocaine-fueled screenplays of the late Hollywood productions. Uh, the things that would bring us um, Top Gun and Days of Thunder. Oh, I gotta get Days of Thunder. I do. And, um... Yeah, so that's all I got for, for my movie of the week. It was Lethal Weapon. It opens and starts with a Christmas song. It's set in Christmas time. I asked 32 Flavors of Nick Weiser, who is watching um, Die Hard. And Die Hard is, be, is, is offered as an action Christmas movie. I love that internet question. Uh, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I love that. Um, it is. I think so. And guess what? Lethal Weapon 1 is a Christmas movie. Yep. And so is Iron Man 3. You know, and chances are, if you're watching a Chain Black movie, The Last Boy Scout, <laughs> hello, <laughs> you have a precocious kid, and it's set around Christmas time or a holiday like that. And um, and it was great to watch. I watched it with uh, one of my flatmates. It's a friend of mine. We watch movies a lot of the times. And so seeing the, just, this was what popular movies were in the late 80s um you, you see that dna everywhere uh, um in robocop um and in, in, in all the action movies the arnold schwarzenegger movies the um um the, the clint eastwood movies too and he was he had thinkers he, he you know he had tightrope he had um firefox he had um uh, he, he had a, a couple of like non Dirty Harry movies and the Dirty Harry movies uh, <laughs> of its time too. This was Hollywood, and this was Hollywood in the '80s. And nothing probably says that more than 1987's *Lethal Weapon*. What is the greater '80s movie? The '80 greater '80s action Hollywood movies. I don't think the canon Golan Globus stuff can can hold a candle to this major Hollywood production. It had the entire full force. It had all the coke and probably all the hookers too. And, uh, but yeah, it had all the shoulder pads and all the bangs and all the nagel uh, drawings. And uh, it was, yeah, and it had the 80s soundtrack too. These moody saxophones and guitar riffs. And it's kind of like, this is so trying to be Miami Vice right now, but on its own level. And it's like Miami Vice meets a buddy cop movie. And uh, you had to live it to, to, be, uh, to understand that. Miami Vice was huge. And so is Lethal Weapon. And I'm going to watch all these movies. But I figured, hey, the Christmas movie, I, the, what are my Christmas movies I got to see with company this year was... The Sound of Music. I'll leave that in, in the corner below. Um, I watched that with loved ones on Christmas night over a Zoom. And then I watched Lethal Weapon 1 with uh, with my flatmate, and who I watch movies with occasionally. And that was a great experience. It was just like, oh my god, look, look how gratuitous this movie is. But I can't look away. It's, it's, it's fun and it's entertaining. Is it good? You know, that's up to you. And uh, I say, heck yeah. It's uh, it's an 80s movie and it's problematic glory. And I'll leave it there. So, um, 
Did you like this kind of content? Well, give me a thumbs up if you did. Give me a thumbs down if you did not like this uh, video at all. I'm a big lad. I can handle it. Leave a comment in the comment section. What do you think about Lethal Weapon? Is it a Christmas movie? What do you, how do you feel about that? Do you like these Shane Black movies? Do you see the system uh, of a precocious kid in, in Christmas? <laughs> Let me know if you do. I'd like to know in the comments below. Continue this conversation. And I would like to earn your subscription and be part of your daily YouTube life. I make daily content. I'm a spiritual guy, an ordained minister. I make spiritual videos. We say, hey, let's get spiritual here. I'm also a professional line cook. I make uh, cooking videos. So I'm giving you my restaurant hacks so you can make delicious, nutritious, and beautiful food for you to share with your loved ones at your table. Thanks for spending some time with me talking about movies. I love movies. We're going to talk about movies more and more. And i got a big movie collection, and I'm going to just keep watching them and keep talking about them with you. If you like talking about movies, well, you've dialed into the right place. It's Reverend Sully Station. Thank you so very much. Cheers. Good luck. God bless.